Hey guys, what's up? So this video is brought to you by Linode. If you guys are trying to look into cheap and reliable web hosting, trying to get your web product out there, check them out. They're a growing company. They just recently opened a new data center in Canada. They're opening new data centers all the time. And I've been using them for eight years. So check them out. The link is in the description tab below. Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I'm talking about why C Sharp is a better option than Java. And it's mostly just about a list of why would C Sharp be better than Java. Um, so there's going to be counter arguments that this video is not necessarily about, although I do mention a lot of stuff that Java excels at um, over C Sharp. So I'm not trying to be biased or anything, but I'm trying to sum up what this video is about by simply saying that, um, you know, after we go through all these points that C Sharp simply edges out Java, in my opinion. So a bit of history about the language. Java was actually started in the late 90s. It was started by a company called Sun Microsystems, which isn't around anymore. Um, but they used to be a large technology company. James Gosling was a, a major player over there and worked for Sun Microsystems for a long time. I guess he left when the acquisition occurred. And C Sharp, on the other hand, is Microsoft's response, which... When you look at something like Java, there's something called the Java Virtual Machine, and that's the virtual environment that allows Java to run anywhere. So they always say, write your code, and you can run it anywhere. It's portable, things like that. Uh, Java works uh, cross-platform. It always has, so it works on Windows and Linux and all that stuff. And when we talk about the JVM, you program Java on top of the, the JVM, but now there's other languages that exist on top of the JVM, uh, like Closure, Scala, uh, Kotlin, all these different things exist on top of, and they're actually executing Java's bytecode that was created, you know, by Sun Microsystems, ironed out over a long period of time. But the reason why I state that is because that is a, uh, a runtime environment. So if you have the Java runtime environment and you can execute Java code, um, and that was like a big thing, and it was an object-oriented language. It's an uh, it's a C-based language, so it comes from the C, uh, so it has C-like syntax, and um, and again, it's it's completely object-oriented. Microsoft had to do some sort of approach to um, to basically counter what Sun Microsystems was doing because it was capturing a lot of attention. Um, it was a pretty fantastic way to to develop Java. Um, was re really created so that like it would be easier for developers to write what what used to be C++ code. Um, and anyway, Microsoft comes up with their own runtime environment and they have that, which it's the common language runtime. Um, Microsoft, you can call it like .NET, um, but their runtime allows for multiple languages as well. Like similar to like what Kotlin is and stuff like that, Microsoft, and .NET um, has C Sharp, F Sharp, VB.NET, um, and all these other languages, but they're all executing the same runtime environment, similar to how uh, these other languages that, that exist on the Java runtime environment are executing code. So when it comes to stability, both languages are backed by humongous companies. Oracle now owns um, Java. And you can see Oracle is a huge technology company. They have a, a net worth of nearly, or market capitalization of uh, nearly $188 billion. So a very large company, right? But um, Microsoft's even bigger. In fact, Microsoft recently surpassed a trillion dollars in, in market cap. So they're, they're a humongous company. Um, right now, they're, they're currently trending right under a trillion dollars. But they're set to become one of the, the biggest companies in the world again um, in uh, briefly, they did become the largest company in the world, and like Amazon does that. Like, they keep kind of surpassing each other, but um, Microsoft's definitely a huge player in the market, and they're probably going to continue to be. And if we look at the two companies and which of the two are the bigger competitors in the market, um, who, have, you know, who has the, the more dominance, you know, I would say that obviously Microsoft gets the edge over Oracle. All right, so when it comes to actually getting started, which language is easier? Um, Visual Studio and Microsoft C Sharp is going to be easier than getting started with Java. Java has a SDK that you have to download onto your computer, but then you're kind of on your own with, uh, you know, actually being able to execute your JavaScript code and, or not JavaScript, but Java code and run it. 
And with C Sharp and .NET, you get this IDE, which stands for Integrated Development Environment. This is something that like literally is a commercial production level tool. I've been using it for more like nearly 10 years. Um, and major corporations use it because it ties like development teams together. And uh, there, there's just a ton of tooling um, that is provided. But Visual Studio, the IDE itself, is going to have C Sharp already for, like, installed for you. So you just have to install the uh, editor and then you're good to go. Whereas if you're messing with uh, Java, you're going to download the Java SDK first. And then like you're pretty much on your own to just go ahead from there and like configure it to, uh, you know, to your IDE, whatever you're using. So when it comes to building uh, GUI desktop apps that you're going to install on your machine, Microsoft has you covered with like WPF. Also, .NET Core is now cross-platform. Java has tools as well. So if you're going to be doing, uh, again, uh, GUI applications, JavaFX is a, a good option there. So when it comes to game development, C Sharp is going to probably edge out Java. There's been popular games written in Java like Minecraft originally, but Unity is, uh, is a great option for C-sharp developers to actually start writing their games in C-sharp code. Now, technically, the C-sharp code is interacting with um, much lower level C++, C++ code, but that, and, and that, and that is a big problem. So th Java doesn't really have anything in comparison, in my opinion, that competes with Unity. But the fact of the matter is, is that both languages aren't going to excel at gaming. These core engines and a lot of stuff that you're going to see that um, the state of the art games are using out there. It's going to all be like, you know, a lot of it and, and most of it is C++. So if you're going to be a game developer, like both of these language, languages probably aren't the best options for you unless you're just getting started development. Then I think they're going to hold your hand a little bit more, obviously, than something like C++. Because um, in my opinion, that's probably, I mean, you could jump right into it as a first language. But I know it seems like so many people I've talked to that, you know, took a programming course in college or whatever, and it was a C++ course and like they decided they hated programming and like I could totally understand that. I've actually opened up C++ books and dived into C++ programming on multiple occasions, especially when I was first getting started. And it was just like, ah, screw this. And then like, yeah, just going to Python or Perl or anything. It just it was all easier than than C++. When it comes to websites, both languages can be used for major websites. Stack Overflow is one of the most popular websites in the world, probably top 50, if not bigger. Um, everybody knows about it on this channel, I'm sure. And that being said, there's other major um, websites that are using Java. In fact, Java probably outnumbers C Sharp when it comes to like major, major sites that are using Java, like eBay, um, Amazon.com. So when it comes to actual language support, although .NET C Sharp was modeled after Java originally, if you look at some of the best, like, you know, one of the best C Sharp and Java developers probably combined, like both of them, like he knows both of them extremely well, is a guy named John Skeet. And like John Skeet is probably the biggest expert I can think of out there. He's the most upvoted guy on Stack Overflow. And um, like he'll tell you that, at least the last I've heard that, you know, that in his opinion, he thinks C Sharp edges out Java when it comes to features. He can talk about it all day long and like nerd out on all these different minor types of variances that, that the languages now have. But the, the old notion that like C Sharp is the exact same as Java is just false um, these days. Like the languages have derived um, and spread apart, you know, very, very, uh, very much along the decades now. I mean, they've been out for decades now, or at least with .NET close to it. So when it comes to actual tools and things like that, Microsoft actually provides those things, whereas with Java, it's mostly a community-driven thing. So Link is a popular add-on to C Sharp that allows you to do complex querying. So instead of doing like a, a lot of like for each statements and things like that, you could do a lot of um, it, it's a very like specific, like user friendly type of white space querying type language. And it just makes things easier to deal with. And it integrates to things like uh, ADO.net or Entity Framework, which are two uh, ORMs, uh, which object relational mappers for interacting with databases with .NET. Uh, but anyway, Link is built for that. The, the point is that Microsoft provides that tool. So it's actually Microsoft supported and things like that. Uh, whereas like a popular Java project is Mokito, 
uh, for mocking. And uh, th this is just simply, it's an open source community driven project. So it's not like provided by Oracle. Now there are plenty of projects in both languages that could be either corporate driven or um, com community driven. They both have, uh, they both have that. But uh, when it comes to probably overall like open source projects, GitHub, things like that, I would have to say that Java is going to have the slight edge to C Sharp. A lot of C Sharp .NET developers are the typical nine to five corporate dev types, and they aren't the types that are coming home and doing open source projects and things like that. So um, the jobs numbers out there are similar. So there's a, there, uh, roughly the same number of C Sharp developer jobs out there um, as what you know com compared to Java. Um, and although those numbers are, are similar, there are less open source projects out there that are community driven, written in C sharp than Java. So the, um, old argument that Microsoft is a closed source company and traditionally they were, um, over the past decade or so, they've actually made a lot of efforts to expand into the open source community. They've recently open sourced their Roslyn compiler, and this thing is actually written in C Sharp and compiles C Sharp. So I know that's like actually mind boggling for a lot of people, but um, believe it or not, that's possible to do. And that's what this is, and it's open source. So this is essentially what the C Sharp, what C Sharp is. Um, and more so than just that, you know, this is the entire, uh, you know, .NET Roslyn compiler. Um, anyway, th this actual compiler was written by Anders Helsberg. It, it, it's written, I think, it, specifically for VB.net and C Sharp. I don't know if it, if it works for others, to be honest, but I know it works for those two. So when it comes to whether or not Java is truly open source, that, that's a tough question because, honestly, Java or Oracle sued Google for using Java's libraries for the Android, uh, for Android SDK and things like that, and certain libraries that they felt they didn't have, like, uh, that, that they didn't truly release as open source. So it's kind of difficult. And um, sometimes like you don't really know with your Java project if you're using tools that you have to actually pay for a license for. So when it comes to actual corporate level development tools, I feel like Microsoft and C Sharp edges out Java and the tools available there. Microsoft has things like Team Foundation Server that integrate now seamlessly using either, if you want to use Microsoft's version control system built into TFS, you can do that. Uh, but you can also use Git as well. So a lot of people are Git developers. But TFS, uh, Microsoft product, def definitely wraps itself around um, Git very, very well. And um, you can even integrate that into things like Bitbucket, um, uh, Jira, things like that. So if you're using that for like tracking time management tasks, tooling, things like that, um, it can be done easily. This can also be uh, integrated with tools like uh, Jenkins and other build service, uh, service tools and other stuff, uh, things like that. Um, and then, you know, f finally, like Microsoft just, they have the corporate level support for pretty much all of these products that they release out there. So like if, if you as a corporation are buying Microsoft licenses and having this, you know, this software and you're having a bunch of developers using it and things like that, um, it makes a lot of sense to have that corporate level Microsoft support. Like when you really need something, like if you have your systems go down and it's some sort of Microsoft bug, like they're on the hook and they need to be coming out with representatives to help fix that problem. And you do see that in the corporate world. And that could be a, you know, a big deal because, you know, companies obviously are making a lot of money and sometimes, you know, small software bugs can cost millions of dollars a day and sometimes minutes or whatever, depending on the, the level of, of scale there. So when it comes to overall longevity and language popularity, I think C Sharp is edging out Java. Java still is probably the, mo the more widely used language. Like I said, it has still a very large community base, but Microsoft and C Sharp and what that's doing, not just with Microsoft tra trajectory growth, but um, they're jumping into all kinds of different things. So you can use C Sharp to write games with, with C Sharp, or you can use it to write mobile apps, whether it's for... Uh, Android or iOS, if you wanted to, you can use something called Xamarin. I don't actually stand behind Xamarin a hundred percent because honestly, like if you're going to do Android development, you're better off going with Java. Java, like the Android SDK was written from Java. Um, it just makes a lot more sense if, if that's, that's what your goal that it, you would want to go with Java. But, um, if you are building basic level mobile apps, you can do that with unity engine. You can do that with Xamarin. You can do that with all kinds of different tooling out there. Uh, with C Sharp. So 
again, you might want to ask yourself why, like if that's truly your goal, Android. But it, a lot of people will use something like Xamarin. And by the way, have you ever seen a more bland site for Xamarin? I mean, my goodness, what a uh, what a terrible looking website. Um, anyway, the but Xamarin gives you the ability to create mobile apps. You're going to build basic apps and stuff. So if I was going to do something like a movie lookup thing, even something like a SoundHound or yeah, I think SoundHound. If you guys have ever used that, like you can pull out your app, plays music. I think even something like that is probably um, you're probably capable of doing something like that on a uh, Xamarin system. If I were going to create something very complicated, like an eBay type system, definitely go on native. And if I were going to go native, then I'm going to have Android developers working on Java and uh, iOS developers working on Objective-C and Swift. All right. So when it comes to machine learning, big data, it requires intensive, massive amounts of processing power. A lot of that stuff can't be done uh, in parallel processing. So it has to be done in a linear fashion or iteratively. So one process after another. Um, so you want the fastest execution possible, fastest language. And um, for that, I can tell you both flat out C-sharp and Java are going to fall flat on their face. No major, major uh, ML machine shop that's trying to build big data parsing engines and things like that are going to use either one of these two languages. But you can actually use them to probably parse through uh, already sorted data for you, things like that. You could basically use it, but I wouldn't use it for anything serious. Again, ML.NET is Microsoft's machine learning library out there, brand new, probably not uh, widely used or anything yet. And then Java also has its own. But again, this is one of those things where like if you were truly going to be getting into that, like if that was your intention, then you're better off like with game development to go into C++. If you're dealing with something like autonomous systems and you're trying to build anything that like is going to be real time, like you need real time speed. If you need super real time speed, like autonomous systems built into things like Tesla's, um, you know, autonomous driving system, they use C and C++. There's no other alternative. Um, there are other things like I think Ada is used by uh, Boeing for some of their their systems, but like they've been in the news a lot lately, haven't they? Um, but Anyway, like the real time data and things like that, you're not going to get the speed that you need from either C sharp or Java. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense there. So if that is your intention, I would probably stick with C++. All right, guys. So that's it. So if you guys are trying to get started with uh, ASP.NET, you can actually go to my website. This I have uh, ASP.NET tutorial here for $1.99. It's like a, at least a couple hours long or something like that. And it will show you how to get started. There's also plenty of other free resources out there, though. So um, hit up YouTube. I think I have stuff on my YouTube channel as well. Other people probably do. Um, but you guys should stick with me. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day and take care. Bye.